People of Chaos, a message has just been intercepted from the planet Earth, located on the far side of the galaxy. This may be just the program we need to introduce order into Chaos before it's too late. Prepare for receiving message. Message tracked to Japan, east sector of planet, northern hemisphere. Immediate reconnaissance requested. Repeat, immediate reconnaissance requested. Purpose of mission. One, investigate meaning of 5S. Two, study practical examples of 5S in action. Three, report back in detail. The RPHP and ID5S robots will provide assistance and record all data. Good luck. May the power of improvement be with you. I can fix it myself. No, it's dangerous! What is? <laughs> However much you work at 5S, there's no point to it unless you think about everyone's safety. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, this time we've got to look at the relationship between 5S and safety. A factory full of machines and equipment presents even greater potential dangers than normal daily life. But despite the constant implementation of safety measures, accidents still happen. One major problem is that we tend to take safety for granted and get the feeling that accidents will never happen to us. Safety 5S is essential to overcome this bad habit. I think all of us have experienced danger while we've been working, at least once or twice. I have. How about you? Let's talk to the workers. Excuse me, could you tell me about danger situations you've been in? For some reason, nobody wants to talk to me about it. But surely safety problems shouldn't be covered up. They should be discussed frankly, right? I think we all need to learn from bad experiences. First question. What is the purpose of Safety 5S? In most factories, there are many safety first signs to remind everyone that safety is the basis of everything. But people still get injured in accidents. Talking about safety is not enough. Dangers don't just go away. Let's look at the major factors causing accidents. One, there is a lack of basic training and education about the frightening reality of accidents and the importance of maintaining safety at all times. Two, sticking strictly to the rules has not become habitual. Three, there are no proper standards for thorough cleaning and safety precautions have not been fully worked out. And four, no systematic accident prevention plan is included in the general work operations. Zero accidents is not a specific aim. The clearing up and organizing steps of 5S are for creating systems, such as a storage system. The cleaning and standardizing steps create working standards which become the basis for achieving zero injuries and zero accidents. 
and strict training to maintain these standards is the training and discipline step. But however much productivity increases and quality improves, there can be no real development without safety. Safety is actually the starting point of production. Answer to question one. Safety is the starting point of production. Input complete. Second question. What are the main points about Safety 5S? Safety consists of three main factors. Equipment, the people who operate it, and the control system connecting them both. Strange. Just a minute. It's an automatic. Oh, of course. There used to be many accidents with automatic cars when they suddenly shot forward as the gear shift was being operated because the brake was not engaged. To overcome this danger, a compulsory safety design was instigated. In the parking mode, unless the foot brake is operated, it's impossible to move the shift lever. In other words, this is elimination at the design stage of the possibility of an accident occurring. This is known as an essential safety measure. In modern, highly automated factories, this kind of measure is particularly important. One example is the design of safety plugs, which automatically stop equipment operating. Another is an area sensor, which stops equipment if anyone steps inside the danger area. These are basic ways to approach zero accidents. Whenever new equipment is introduced into a plant or equipment is changed in some way, comprehensive checks are required to ensure there are no potential dangers before the equipment is operated. First answer to question two. Eliminate accidents through good design. Input complete. Okay, here we go. Hold it, you've forgotten something. What? What? Oh, the safety belt. Why did I forget that? Everybody makes mistakes. There's no such thing as a perfect person. And in fact, most factory accidents are the result of human error. Now it's time for a game called Spot the Danger. Problem one. A roll of gum tape is left on top of a box on a shelf. Imagine what will happen next. When the box is moved, the tape will fall off and hit the person. Problem two. Imagine what will happen if you pull a cart that should be pushed. Your foot will get stuck under the cart. If we apply ourselves to problems like these, it soon becomes clear that we all have the ability to foresee danger and to do something about avoiding it. To improve this ability, one good method is to have danger spotting training sheets, which can be studied at any time. Second answer to question two. Improve foresight to avoid human errors. Well, now I want to back up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, wait. Not that way. Oh, hey, what's happening? Oh, help! Oh, no! The next point is how to deal with abnormal situations such as short stoppages, correcting operation errors, temporary high-level work using step ladders, and work in areas under construction. Work that is done under circumstances different from normal is known as non-routine work. Many accidents are caused in non-routine situations because safety control is at its weakest there. The first principle for safety first is to create standards and apply them rigorously. 
Most accidents that occur are caused by abnormal situations or operations that are not standardised. Standards clearly distinguish the normal and the abnormal, so visual control is essential for the immediate detection of abnormalities by anyone in the workplace. Third answer to question two, standardization and visual control. Input complete. Third question. What are effective procedures for implementing Safety 5S? Most of us have put ourselves in heart-stopping situations simply by ignoring the rules, even though we may never have been in an actual accident. Come on, hurry up and change. I think I'll cross anyway. Oh! You mustn't take that kind of thing lightly. According to Heinrich's rule, for every serious injury in an accident, there are 29 minor injuries and 300 narrow escapes. If you can avoid all the narrow escapes, then the accidents will automatically disappear. Let's look at the most effective ways to get rid of dangerous situations. The first thing is to forecast dangers, make a list of them and think carefully about them. Here is a simulation of an actual accident that happened at this plant. Through reconstruction of an incident like this, and then repeated viewings of the video, you can gain a great deal of useful knowledge to use in improvements. This is an automobile parts maker which manufactures vibration and noise dampers. A notebook is kept by each section in which workers can immediately report narrow escapes whenever they occur. Reports on these incidents are prepared later for presentation to the safety committee. Examples of relevance to everyone are presented to all the staff in the form of spot the danger games. Two teams play the game at one time. They are given just three minutes playing time each in front of the rest of the staff to imagine dangers in the situation presented. Different sections appear each month. This means that everyone is actively involved. And there's even a row of judges to evaluate skills. We used to just use the comments in the narrow escape notebooks from each section to get information on dangerous points in the factory. But it was not really a very active way of improving safety consciousness. So we decided to start using spot the danger games every month to get everybody involved, with different sections competing each time. <laughs> to make the evaluation of teams fair, we also made a special evaluation sheet. The games go on before work starts, from 8.20 a.m. until 8.30. Each section's turn soon comes round again, so everyone's kept on their toes. Awareness of safety problems has increased a lot, and also enthusiasm about filling out the notebooks. The workers also find it easier now to point out dangers to their colleagues and discuss them together. The next process is to practice imagining the kind of accident that could occur at the danger point so that countermeasures can be developed to prevent it happening. This is known as accident image training. Now some examples. First, a pneumatic table. There's a real possibility here of getting your hands stuck in the lifting mechanism if there is no cover on it. An effective countermeasure at the danger point is a rolling curtain which moves with the table. Here's another common example with a parked forklift. It's very easy to trip over the fork if it's slightly off the ground. A simple countermeasure is to ensure that the fork rests on the ground when not in use. However, note that nobody should be walking inside the white parking lines anyway. And next, the possibility of workers or tools falling while working high above the ground. In this plant, they used to do high-level machine assembly work using scaffolding. 
countermeasure was to devise a cable and pulley system so that all the work could be done at ground level. We used to think it was only natural to do all the assembly work on the machine itself, working high off the ground, but it was very dangerous. We tried out various ideas to improve safety, for example, movable platforms, but none of them led to any real improvement. Finally, we came to the conclusion that safety could be improved by doing all the assembly on the ground. That meant designing completely new assembly jigs and lifting jigs. Lead time, man hours, and the number of operators required have all been reduced. This method's proved to be very effective and very safe. Other improvements implemented here were fences to avoid operators falling and anti-slip flooring for forklifts. By imagining the danger at any danger point, you should always be able to develop some kind of countermeasure. Research has shown that 70% of accidents occur on machines that already have safety devices attached. The reason is that the safety measures are ignored. This means that standardization of safety measures and proper training are essential to maintain perfect safety levels. For example, these frames on the conveyor are a result of standardization which increased efficiency. The aim was to prevent the piles of products from falling over. It's impossible to exceed the fixed amount in any one pile. As we've said before, a very simple but effective way to maintain work standards is the point and call method. It not only serves to confirm exactly what you are doing, it also makes it easier for supervisors to see that everyone is sticking to the rules. Accidents can easily be caused by very slight miscalculations, as these examples show. During training on safety measures, it's vital to think about possible operating errors and what to do about them. Once an operating error occurs, it's easy to get excited and behave erratically, which can of course lead to other, more serious accidents. Training must include how to keep cool and behave correctly when anything goes wrong. Finally, in accordance with legal standards, regular checking of all safety equipment is vital. Of particular importance is the checking of new or modified equipment before use. The control zone, which includes exactly how and when the machine can be stopped, should be clearly defined. Ideally, checking should be carried out by the three people in charge of engineering, production and safety. Answer to question three. Forecasting dangers, image training and countermeasures, standardization in training, checking. One more question, number four. What improvements can we get from Safety 5S? Now I want to see some complete examples of Safety 5S in action. Look! A robot in a cage! Ah, that's to make sure that humans don't disturb him when he's working and get hurt. The robot is now working. Please keep your distance. The robot is now working. Ah, this is a sound warning, right? The robot is now working. Normally, the door is locked while the robot is working. If you want to enter the robot's work area, when you disconnect the plug attached to the helmet, the robot will automatically stop and the door can be opened. The robot will not operate again until the door is locked and the plug replaced. 
So even if someone closes the outside door without noticing the worker inside, there is no danger of the robot suddenly starting to work. is floating. This hovercraft device enables one person to move up to two tons quite safely and without much effort. Only one person to move two tons. And the air pressure system is used for other processes in the plant at virtually no cost. Setup often requires a great deal of strength as well. Here a motor and rollers are used to avoid unnecessary effort. One worker can easily move a die weighing 1.5 tons without directly touching it. And there's never a problem with it getting stuck. Even I could do that. First answer to question four. Avoid operational mistakes by improving equipment. It's worth remembering that safety is not restricted to your own plant. This company delivers factory automation equipment for use with machine tools to several different companies. They hold special safety training meetings for staff who will be sent to other companies along with the equipment to set it up and provide instruction in its use. If the machine demonstrators caused accidents, there would be a lot of trouble. We place great emphasis on safety matters inside our own plants, but we also stress safety during all the work operations our staff will do in conjunction with other companies. One of our basic premises is never to cause our customers any inconvenience. Every member of our staff must take personal responsibility for safety concerns. Of course, wearing protective gear is a fundamental rule both here and at our customers' plants. Our customers appreciate our efforts and put their complete trust in us with regard to guaranteeing safety. Second answer to question four, regular training is the basis of all safety. It's said that everyone's attitude toward 5F can make or break a factory. What we've seen during our visits is that improvement activities certainly begin with creating a 5S base. Waste and losses can gradually be removed but there's always the danger of reverting to the original condition if workers are against change in a system that has been developed over many years. In other words, to complete 5S, it's important to improve attitudes and awareness that 5S exists for everyone's safety. Well, I hope you've learned as much about 5S as we have. Now, everybody, zero trouble with 5S. Zero trouble with 5S. Good luck. Being an Earthling was fun. <laughs> but don't you think this is a real improvement? All data safely stored. Let's go home. Yes, I can't wait to teach all those other robots something or two. <laughs> Welcome back to Chaos. Your mission is finally accomplished. The knowledge you have brought has saved our planet. No longer Chaos, but forever Harmony. <laughs>